For this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Once again, I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we are going to focus on fathers, because indeed this is Father's Day weekend. And we go to the Old Testament in the book of Judges, the sixth chapter, 11 through the 14th verses. And it says, now the angel of the Lord came and sat under a terebinth tree, which was in Oprah, which belonged to Joash, the Abizrite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, the Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all of this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about, saying that God did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Today we're going to talk to you from the subject of it's your season to be a blessing. When God is setting you up to raise you up, you can't hesitate. When God says now, you can't say later to receive all that God has prepared for you. When God says now, you have to say now that this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Why will I rejoice and be glad today? Father's Day is the day that God is going to bless my life. Father's Day is the day I'm going to be a blessing to others. Fathers, this is your season to be blessed and be a blessing. This is not a time to get upset. This is a time to get excited. Why your celebration is going to lead you from one season of promise to another. When elevation hits your life and your life is about to get lifted, and just before a rocket is launched, there's fire and smoke underneath, and it's the fire that launches the rocket. The fire and smoke that you see is your sign that you are about to take off. The Bible says in James 1, Count it all joy when you fall into a diver's temptation, knowing that the trying of your faith works patience. And all that you've been going through is a sign that you have been cleared for takeoff. Take off into peace. Take off into happiness. Take off into anointing. Say, I'm taking off to my next level of serving the Lord. I have been on this level long enough. I have been stagnated long enough. I've been watching others progress long enough. And it's our season to celebrate as men of God. Look at the person sitting next to you and say, it is my season to be blessed. It is my season to be a blessing. I am the leader of my household. Have you ever had a busy day or a bad day or a long day? And in the midst of what you're dealing with, the phone rings. And although you probably can't talk at that particular moment or you have too much going on to answer the phone, 
but you pick it up and you say hello. And the person on the other end, without saying hello, are asking you how you're doing, ask questions, what are you doing? In other words, in the midst of frustration, to have someone calling you who wants nothing. But imagine this for a moment. You're dealing with depression. You have planted a garden that has been mentally robbed and, and you become paranoid. And in the midst of this, God is calling you, saying, I have an assignment for you. And if you're truthful for just a moment, you feel the same level of frustration when a person calls and wants nothing. Why? Well, truthfully, you have too much going on to hear from God. You're dealing with too much to even want to know where God is trying to take you. Yet God is calling you and he's saying there's a purpose on your life. Tell your neighbor that there's an assignment on my life. Gideon had an assignment on his life. God wanted him to deliver Israel. Israel had been oppressed by the Midianites. Why? Well, it was a result of their disobedience. And isn't it good to know, isn't it good to know that even when you cause your own preoccupation, that God will still free you. Israel needed to be delivered. The best man for the job, the best man for this assignment was a man called Gideon. And when God found Gideon, he was threshing wheat behind the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. And again, he was threshing wheat. Threshing wheat was done on the threshing floor. And it is there on the threshing floor where God found Gideon. And do you remember your encounter with the Lord? God's layman should remember your encounter with God when you were the busiest. Perhaps you asked someone who was less fortunate, I prayed for someone in distress. But watch this. When God found Gideon, his activity was threshing wheat separating the edible from the inedible on the threshing floor. And before God can use you, before he can use you, before he, you can fulfill your God-given assignment, you first got to go to the threshing floor. You have to go to a place of separation. The threshing floor is a place where you go and separate yourself from anybody and anything that can hinder you from act, act effectively doing what God wants you to do. The threshing floor helps you to decipher what I can use from what I can't use. The threshing floor helps you to see what is good for you and what will hurt you. How do you do this? It's a good question. The question is, how do you let go and let God direct you? Well, here's the answer. Take it to the floor. Take it to Jesus. Take it to Jesus. And if you want to know who is in your life to bless you, you just ask the Lord. If you want to know who's in your life to break you, you need to ask God. Tell someone close to you, you got to pray about that thing. You got to go to a mental place of separation. And this is where you take everything that's connected that you can see and what you can keep and what you can throw away. Who am I preaching to today? Well, when I tell you there's some things and some folks that you need to take to the threshing floor. You need to separate the good things from the trash. Bad attitude, take it to the floor. Negative thinking, take it to the floor. When you want to curse, take it to the floor. When you want to go off, you take it to the floor. When you want to fight, you take it to the floor. 
And everyone that you that said that you'll never be nothing, take them to the floor. Everyone that tried to pronounce your doom, take them to the floor. Everyone that lied on you, take them to the floor. Everyone that calls you by your bad habit instead of your heart, take them to the floor. And everyone that's making fun of you right now, take them to the floor. And when you take them to the floor, God is going to cause a separation between you and them. No, they, they won't understand. No, they will not like it. Yes, they will talk about you. You, you will be free of everything and every person that's trying to get you from where God is trying to take you. Tell somebody I'm going to take it to the floor. And before God gives you an assignment, he will show you what he sees when he looks at you. And the way he does that is by not allowing what you're going through to break you just so you can see just how strong you are. And Israel was in bondage and they were in a border line famine. The Midianites kept stealing their crops. Gideon had to hide what little they had from the Midianites. And God speaks to Gideon, saying, the Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. The name Gideon means uh, mighty warrior. And God showed Gideon, when, and he sees what he looked at him a mighty warrior. In other words, Gideon, you're mightier than you think you are. And I came to encourage fathers and make you realize you're mightier than you think you are. And there's a reason why you're still alive. When you're mighty, you don't panic under pressure. You don't break under burdens. You're not destroyed by disappointment and you're not taken out by tragedy. When you're mighty, you allow what is to lift you above than what's around you. The more than a conqueror, tell somebody close to you, you're mightier than you think. Our brotherhood reaches out to those who are trying to find a way and in need. You are a man of promise. And God says, get in your mighty man of valor. And Gideon responds not with thanksgiving, and not with worship and praise, but he responds with complaints. He says, oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why has all of this happened to us? And if God is with us, why has all of this hell broken loose? If God is with us, why is all of this happening to me? Where are the miracles which our fathers told us about? Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? Did not the Lord bring us out of slavery in that country? And with all Israel was going through, Gideon had legitimate complaints. How many of us have gone through so much that we stopped and we asked God, why? How many of us have ever asked the question, where are the miracles that granddaddy told us about? What do you do when you have questions and no answers? The teacher never answers questions during testing time. The teacher only gives final instructions. And this was God's final instructions to Gideon. Go in this with your might and what's inside of you you shall save Israel from the hand of the enemy. God is saying that the salvation of every person connected to you is in your hand. And if they're going to be free, God, I'm going to use you to free them. Watch this. God showed me some areas where we can free somebody spiritually, helping someone find Jesus in their life. You can do all things through Christ 
who will give you the strength. Tell them if they change their mind, they can change their life. When God elevates you, reach back and bring somebody with you. And I need to get to this. In order to be successful at freeing someone from the hand of Satan, you must go when God says go. God said, Gideon, you will deliver Israel from the hand of the enemy because I sent you. You can't go where God does not send you. If God sends you, where God guides you, he will provide. If God sends you there, he will sustain you and bring you to victory. And then God, Gideon spoke again, saying, O oh Lord, how shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. I come from a poor family. I am the least of them all. A poor self-image <clears throat> can keep you from things of the Lord. <clears throat> Sometimes we develop a poor self-image and low self-esteem because of where we come from, where we grew up, what others have said about us. And my question is, what do you say about yourself? What do you think about you? Look at somebody and tell them, I'm happy being me. That's why every time you see me, I'm doing me. Every time I come to church, I'm doing me. Every time I walk down the street, I'm doing me. And God tells Gideon, <clears throat> excuse me, to go and surely I will be with you. And when I called you, I didn't call you based on where you've been. I called you because of where you're going. And many times you look at where we go as punishment. And I've come to tell somebody today, the thing you're going through is not about punishment, but it's a promotion. The reason you've been through what you've been through was to bring you to a place of promotion. The Lord says, no, I have not left you. I have not forsaken you. I'm getting ready to elevate you because it's your season to be blessed. And the Lord says, I'm going to put you through a series of events, the problem, the pain, the power, and the promotion. And God is shifting you from problems to promotion. He's shifting you from where you are to who you shall be, shifting you from then to now. He's shifting you from yesterday to your tomorrow, from the past to your future, from your history to your destiny, from sadness to happiness, from dependence to independence. Tell somebody close to you, I'm shifting. So let us celebrate a new beginning. Let's celebrate the promise of God because he's preparing you for greater things. What's to come is better than what's been. That's why he sent Jesus to an old rugged cross. That's why he died for us. That's why they hung him high and stretched him wide for us. He well, that's why he stayed in a borrowed tomb for us. That's why he stayed in the ground all Friday night and all day Saturday and Saturday night. And that's why my way maker, my elevator, my burden bearer, my comforter got up on Sunday morning with all power in his hand. Tell somebody that I can only imagine what God has in store for me. Hold your head up, wipe the tears from your eyes. What's coming will be better than what's been. Are there any people 
in this place that believes it, somebody ought to say amen. Somebody ought to say God is all right with me. Somebody ought to say I've had a blood transfusion. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful Heavenly Father, we come to you because indeed it's our season to be blessed and it's our season to be a blessing to others. Oh, Father, we just ask that you guide us, we protect us, that you will smile upon our works and give us a reward. But Master, most of all, we have you who said to us that we can do all things through you because you will give us the strength. You have instilled in us that we are mighty warriors of compassion. And we just ask that you continue to walk with us and talk with us. We ask it in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen.